Hey everybody, my name is Chris Warren. My name is Matt Lopes. Welcome to the You Should Be Worried podcast. What else, what other kind of podcast are you going to get two fucking boys that could die at any day with a fucking cute ass dog? Look at this dog. Look at this dog. Look at him. Gotta keep looking. I'm sorry, this shouldn't be. All right, we're back. We're here. We're doing well. Welcome to the fucking podcast. Chris, how was your week? You doing good? My week was good. I was all over. I just came back from Maryland. I'm on three hours of sleep, and I, I feel good. It's always nice. It's always nice. nice going to Maryland. Where's the fuck? Is that near New Jersey? So Maryland confuses me. Delaware? Yeah, it's right next to Delaware. But, like, but where's Delaware? <laughs> you know? <laughs> what the fuck is? Maryland confuses me because it's like, depending who you ask, it's like a southern state where yeah. it's not a southern state. And then mm. some people I met there were like, no, we're part of Tidewater. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And they're like, it's its own, it's like Maryland, Delaware, and part of like Pennsylvania are its own thing, apparently. That's fucking stupid. Yeah, that's what I said. Fuck New Hampshire, fuck Delaware, fuck Maryland. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say. None of these states are good. I'm going to say that uh, it is a southern state because when I was there, I tried to like, my vape died and I tried to bum a cigarette from a guy. Yeah. He's like, I don't have a cigarette, but you want dip? And pulled out like a bag of dip. Not oh, a tin, fuck. like a bag, like an you know, industrial bag of dip. And I'm like, I'm, I'm all good, man, but thanks. And that's like, <laughs> yeah, this is the South. Holy shit. Yeah. They do dip down to South. Yeah, there are a lot of, a lot of pick em up trucks. <laughs> pick em up trucks. A lot of pick em up trucks down there. <laughs> but uh, they were a fun audience. They were cool. Uh, Maryland, shouts out to you guys. You probably got along real, real nice down there with that mustache. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? People, people looked at me and were like, look at this queer. <laughs> I love the get up. The get up is good. The 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 robe. Yeah, thanks. It was a gift from my gay dad many Christmases ago. That's nice. It's yeah. a really nice. It puts it together. Usually, like I'm, I'm sure if you wore it at home, like it makes sense as like a bedtime thing. Yeah. But when you wear it out like that, it just makes you look like pimpy. Yeah. You know? I'm just I'm out here. Cat Williams in it out. Yeah. I mean that's I'm the I'm this generation's Cat Williams. Is what that's most facts. people tell me. That is. Yeah. That's factual information. Yeah. Bro's what, what about you, Matt? What did you do this week? I didn't do anything. I didn't work a lot because I, I, I had a lot. Of, I've been having a lot more gigs. Yeah. And I have this thing right now where, like, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm like, whoa, right? You're blocking the camera. Get the fuck away from the camera. Um, you're, uh, the thing is, like, I, I take off work because if I go out of state for a gig, yeah. uh, after working a whole, like, a whole fucking day shift, I fall asleep on the road. And that's not good. It's definitely not good. It's not great. So... Um, I, I, I have a lot of days off where I, I be, I wake up around like noon and then like, hopefully that's good enough for me to like get all the way out into like New York or wherever. I had a weird experience at work similarly. Yeah. Like I was at work and we were doing my quarterly review or whatever that we do at my company. Yeah. And my manager's like, you're doing really good at this job. And like, this is one of those jobs where you drink the Kool-Aid and they want you to stay there for like 30 years and they promote from within. Like they want your whole career to be there. Isn't so, that every job? No, a lot of people is no. In corporate America, like no, you usually have to like find a new job to get a promotion. Yeah. Like, um, but this one is like it's actually a really good company. But she was like, Yeah, so what do you want to do? Do you want to like get on a management track? Do you want to go into the sales side? Maybe like more of the back end thing? Like, what are you looking to do with your career here? I was like, I'm I want to just have this job till I don't need this job anymore. Right. And, and she she was like, What? Because that's never, like, everyone's always going to Never an answer that you, she, that you, she, that she, she's She heard. was like, what? And I was like, yeah, this is the perfect amount of responsibility. If anything, I would actually like to take a pay cut to have less responsibility. And she was like, um, Yeah, bro. She's like, <gasps> Holy shit. Like, it broke her brain. And then she was like, you know, that's not really the attitude we have here. And I literally just went, listen, if I get, like, this, I don't plan on having a career. Like, this is not my career. Yeah. Um, they also don't know I do comedy, so I didn't like. They just think I'm crazy. Yeah, you had no. Uh, yeah, so I'm you just had nothing like, to like yeah. really give them. I, d I just said like <laughs> I have a very full life outside of this office, and this is just a means to provide for that. So it's like if I lose this job, I lose this job. I'll find another one. So she, she, you know, if you want me to do more, like you can just fire me. I said Whoa. it more diplomatically. Yeah, than that. yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, if it's not working out, you can let me go. And she was just like, all right, I don't know what to do with that. Fuck, dude. Dude, it was cool though. It's great to just have that feeling of like, oh, I don't care about this. Yeah. Like everyone in my office freaks out about stuff all the time. And I'm like, I don't. Your bosses care. are like, what the fuck is going yeah. on? Oh, I also had this thing where they, <laughs> the other week I had a show and on Wednesday and they wanted me to come to the happy hour afterwards. They also yeah. don't know I'm sober. They know nothing about me. They have, they have they no clue know, who this man yeah, is. Yeah. Um, and they were like, you, you should come to the happy hour. And I was like, no, I got a thing I have to do afterwards. And they asked what it was. And I, again, I don't want them knowing I do comedy. Right. So I'm just like, um. 
it's just like a thing I have to do. That's really important. I can't like, you know, I got to leave right away to make it. Cause and they're just like, yeah, but what is it? It's like, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Wait, but you can't tell employers shit like that. I can do whatever I want. Of course, well, of yeah. course you can. But like in my experience, like whenever a manager asks, uh, you better have like a good excuse in order to actually well, no. get. And that. I, I work with a guy who's come to several of my shows. Oh no! And it's like it's like a fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I'll be walking around, and they'll just be like, "Oh, Mr. Comedian, what's up?" And I'm just like, "Shut the fuck chill, up! Chill, chill, chill the fuck out! What are you doing? Be chill." Here? And so I just have this fear that one day. Because he works in, like, a different department that one day he's just going to come down to my floor and be like, oh, how'd the show go this weekend? I'm like, shut the fuck Can up. you fucking stop, yeah. please? <laughs> so that's, that's a fear of mine. Fuck. Nobody at my job. Everybody knows that I do comedy and I'd no one they, likes it. it has to <laughs> yeah. But, like, nobody's like, yo, you're fucking crushing. <laughs> and that'd they're be, all just like, yeah, he's the comedian. That'd be crazy if you worked at the club and just didn't reveal that you had a comedy career. <laughs> You're like, no, I just really like working at this club. I'm a fan. Yeah, just yeah. never, like, where have you been? It's like, I just had to go somewhere. Oh, dude, another cool thing about my job? Yeah. I'll, I actually love my job. So um, we go in, like, twice a week, right? Yeah. And there's this new person that joined my team, mm -hmm. and they're trans. Okay. They were born biologically a man, but now identify as a woman. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also, I'm the only one. I just want to say this for anyone who thinks one way about me. I am the only person on my team the last month since they joined that has not messed up their pronouns. Everyone else has messed up their pronouns and had to Whoa. apologize. I am on fire. That's how you know that she's not a good man or that she's not a good woman. That's all you. Uh, but no, what I love about her, and I won't say her name because I'm not trying to like it. I'd like to redact that yeah. statement. What I love about her is like she will just like if management's fucking up, uh -huh. like we're in a meeting because we have meetings like every week. Yeah. And they're like telling us some initiative we have or some numbers thing. Like she'll just be like, that's dumb. That's dumb. And just like say, like call out the management, like yeah, my yeah. boss's boss about how that's a dumb idea. Why would we do it that way? Right. And so one day I pulled her aside. I'm like, yo, like, I love it. Everyone agrees with you. Like on our end, like the whole team agrees yeah, with you. Yeah. But like, I'm just like, they're going to fire you. You can't be doing shit like that. Like, I don't, I don't want to see you get fired. Right. And she was like, listen, Chris, I'm the only trans person in this office. Oh no. She, this is what she said. She's pulling the card, yeah, bro. She, she's like, listen, this is an office of 2000 people. I'm the only trans person here. If they want to try to fire the only trans woman in the company, they can go ahead and try. They can try. Because she's like, I will bring it up in the meeting where they try to fire me. No Let's see them try to, because it's a really like about inclusivity, the yeah. company. So she's like, I'm they immortal. She's listen. like, as long as I hit my they numbers. Have to listen I, to this trans yeah. person's she's like, She's like, as long as I, I love that. hit the bare minimum for my numbers, I'm immortal. And I was like, you might be my new favorite person in the office. I, did we just become best friends? Like, this rules. Like, I respect the fuck out of her that Holy she just is like, fuck. yeah, what are they going to do? And she and she even said she even said this. I'm not even kidding. She's like, you're Jewish, right? I'm like, yeah. She's like, I don't see a lot of other Jews here. Might want to keep that in mind. Anything ever goes wrong. And I was like, yo. <laughs> yeah. Bro's got fucking dude. strategies, yeah, she, dude. So she hooked up. She's like, got shit in her back pocket, dude. That's so interesting. Like, you know, like how... Like when you when you look at your surroundings and you just have the most boss mindset about it, yeah. like you just you you see the world from the best kind of perspective. Yeah. She's a go getter, dude. Oh, That's no. fucking She's sick. A great ambassador for the community because nothing. Not that I ever had a problem with trans people, but nothing has made me respect them more yeah. than watching how this woman operates. I'm just like, <laughs> you are a fucking G. Like and she's That's like, fucking beautiful. Like even her hooking me up, she's like. So you're the only Jewish guy in this department. Like, if they want to try to fire you, I would bring that up. And I was like, looking out. Hell yeah, Jesus dude. fuck. <laughs> uh, That's so beautiful. What? I love that. She's not like a victim. Yeah. Like she, she won't victimize herself. And I already planted that seed because I told you, I think we talked about on the podcast when my manager like mentioned, like, your last name's not very Jewish. Why do you need this Jewish holiday off? And I was like, what do you mean by that? And she got so uncomfortable, so I've already planted that. No. So, yeah. Wait. You just so instead of like answering their questions, you just like start accusing them. No, because because I didn't know. Like, it what do you first. mean by that? I didn't know. Cause someone oh, told Warren me Warren can't be a Jewish last yeah. night. Yeah, no one told me that you didn't have to state what you were taking time off. So originally, I would put the stuff. Yeah, and I mark my calendar as far in advance as I can because I want to be like a good team player. Right. Um. And so I put you know Purim off for this 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 coming up. It's actually this Monday. Yeah. Um. And she was like, "What is that?" I'm like, "Oh, it's like Jewish Halloween." She's like, Last name's Warren. That's not a very Jewish last name. And I was like, what do you mean by that? She's like, what? And I was like, 
well, no, what does a Jewish last name sound like? Like, can I get an example? <laughs> and she got so uncomfortable. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean, you know what? Never. Yeah, you can have that day. Just let me know in advance any holidays you need off. Like, I'm not familiar with the Jewish calendar. Like, have a great day. And I was get like, get the fuck out of here. I was here. like, party hard, dude. Party Holy hard. shit. I wish there were fat holidays off. I wish there were holidays for fat people to take off. Well, you have the Nathan's uh, hot have, dog eating contest. Yeah, we have year. that. We have the Buffalo Wild Wings uh, every Tuesday BOGO deal. Yeah, every I Tuesday, get... I got to go to the BOGO <laughs> deal. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, I don't know. Christmas, I guess, if Santa Claus is a fat guy. Yeah, that's you know, representation. I need Christmas off. Everybody gets Christmas off. So that know, doesn't really count. That's what I'll say to my, my our audience. If you have any sort of like... Distinction. Distinction about you, Distinctive like whatever quality. you want to call that, like a protected class or anything like that. <laughs> Listen, you're looking at it like it's a disadvantage. You have to turn it into an advantage. You have to, yeah, switch it around, baby. You got this. Start turning your, start turning that shit into a superpower. All yeah. right. And if you're, and if you have no, if you don't have a distinctive quality and you're just a meat and potatoes person, sorry. No, figure it out. I converted to Judaism. Okay, you can figure <laughs> it out. Bet- between having a gay dad and being <laughs> now a Jewish person, yeah, that gives me so much ammo for any situation. Holy shit, dude! <laughs> bro's bro's just different. Yeah, bro wasn't different four years ago, but bro's now now bro's different. Oh, and then when you add in the sobriety thing, dude. Oh, that happened today. I can't believe I didn't to say this. Well, I mean, so I was driving to an AA meeting. Yeah, and I was running late, and I was on the phone talking. Yeah, yeah. As I do all the time when I drive, I'm always on the phone, and I got pulled over. And the cop was no like, no way. And I've never, no, I was like, what is this, the 2000s? Cause he was like, you can't be talking on your phone while driving. Like, I've never seen anyone get a ticket for this. No, in years. people, they stopped doing that or apparently, some shit. Apparently, this cop didn't get the memo. So he pulls me over and he's like, oh, you know why I pulled you over? And I was like, no. And he was like, oh, you were talking on your phone. And I was like, oh, like, my, my bad. Like, I just I was like, I'm not going to argue with you. It's like, yeah, I was. Like, my bad. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, um, where were you headed today? Cause you know, they always ask you that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh, you actually, I'm like one block over and I pointed because I was like right in sight of the church I was going yeah, to. It's yeah. like, I'm on my way to an AA meeting. Sorry, I was a little distracted. I was I was making calls for AA. And he was like, oh, really? And he was like, yeah. You know, my, my cousin's in AA. That's a great program. You know what? Don't worry about it. This is a warning. Like, you know, good on you for the recovery. Like, get over there. And I was like, thanks. No way, yeah, no, dude. Man. And that's normally like a $100 ticket. Bro. And he came up aggressive. Like, I was getting that ticket. Yeah, yeah. And I said that. I was like. Bro nice. feels bad. Dude, how does it feel to be pity? At... How does it feel to be pity to like that? I think that's the only reason I've gotten anything in my life is through, <laughs> is through pity. People just feel bad for me. <laughs> Do you feel like that's a good that's a good idea? Like you, you don't feel bad about that, right? If if obviously if you're getting shit, do you feel bad as to why you're getting that shit? Um, I mean historically I've functioned off a lot of pity. I'm trying yeah. to not anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's part of like the sobriety thing is like self empowerment sure. and and you know all that. So it's like not how I want to live my life anymore. Mm-hmm. And also, I used to be a much more pathetic person. Like right. The pity was kind of warranted back in the day. It was pretty sad. Yeah. But now, like, I'm a life together. I'm making good money. Comedy's going well. I got good friends. Now, whenever you get it, it's kind of like a little gift. It's like a little gift. <laughs> a little present. Because <laughs> I was like, I, I wasn't going to mention well, I have a year of sobriety. I'm actually like, you know, I'm good. Yeah. I kind of implied it was like a new thing I was trying out. <laughs> you know? Chris is a master manipulator. Yeah. He's a fucking master at it. Uh, They're going to try to, what, not give unless, Chris here, But Here's the thing. If you're listening, I'm always honest with you. Chris, do you have a fucking you should be worried? We did a, oh, yeah, an I have, hour of I have, the pod. I have a you should be worried. So I think you should be worried about chat GBT. What is, what's chat GBT? Well, I'm glad you asked, Matt. Chat GBT is um, this program. It's an AI that okay. you give it something to write about, like a subject. Like, you give it, like, what, prompts? Yeah, so it's a short prompt. Like, you might be, like, um, like for instance, if, if you had, like, I would give it, like, tell me about comedian Matt Lopes. Uh-huh. And it would give me, like, a run, like, a five-paragraph essay about you. AI generated? Yeah, AI generated. Like, it only really works for people that are, like, have a lot of information on them. Because sure, it pulls sure, from everything right, right. on the internet. So, yeah. like, in a year or two from now, I could do that on you. But, like, I might do it on, like, you know, give me give me what President George W. Bush. Yeah, yeah, and right. give me, like, an essay about him, right? And just freakishly accurate. And what and it's, like, written well and shit? Yeah. And uh, here's here's what I think would be cool. And this is, so, it, it tends to have a very woke left leaning, because that's who it was programmed by, is, like, a group of people out in Calabasas or whatever that did okay. that. So, it tends to lean more that way in terms of, like, what it tells you. Yeah, more progressive. I want 
a conservative version. <laughs> I want like an alt right version where like Chat GBT just set, tells you racist shit. Like you, <laughs> you, you, you ask it something and it just starts quoting you crime statistics. Oh, and like, fuck. Fucking, I think that'd be so fun. <laughs> I think it'd be so fun. Oh just no. Just this hate filled, like far right. Can you believe it? minded AI. <laughs> yeah. so you're saying you're worried about like how the left one is the only one that we kind of no, have. No. I'm worried about how, because it's gotten so good and it's only going to get better. Yeah. Yeah. It's already pretty impressive. I messed around with it the other day. It's already pretty impressive. It's going to take on a certain fucking. It's, I don't even care what side it is, but the fact that you could skew it any way you want, not even politically, just any way you want. And yeah. it's so well done and convincing Holy that it's shit. like the propaganda you could do with this thing is nuts. Wow. I can't imagine. Cause you don't need man hours anymore. You just type in like a hundred different things into it. It t- takes you five minutes to type a hundred different prompts into it. And then it <laughs> writes you like a hundred New York times articles worth of stuff can you, <laughs> about whatever subject with the skew you want. Can you imagine you end up relapsing and you use chat GBT, your suicide note, <laughs> right? Suicide note for failed for comedian, <laughs> Chris Warren. <laughs> Chris Warren could never get his career off the ground. <laughs> Always seen as a weird one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I think that'd be cool. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, but so that worries me a little bit, like what oh, AI is. Yeah. But not even ChatGPT itself. If AI is that far, mm-hmm. and I'm sure it's farther than that, and they just don't tell us, or it's going to, like, because it gets exponentially better. Yeah. Like, where's AI going to go? I'm more worried generally. You should be worried about AI in general. That's nuts. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like kids can use ChatGPT for, like, essays and shit in school? Yeah, that's what they're worried about. You definitely can. 100%. And, like, it's a well-written essay and shit. So now it's going to force teachers to be like, is this written the way Bobby would fucking write this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what if Bobby's just, like, good? Bobby crushes. Bobby crushes, dude. Bobby's not not well-spoken in class, but his chat G- his essays are fucking... Well, if you type the same prompt into chat GBT, will it, like... That we'll I don't do the know. same thing over and over again, or is it different every time? That I don't know, because when I was experimenting with ChatGBT, like, earlier this week, I was just trying to get it to be racist. And it's free to do? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking right. I was <laughs> trying so hard to get it to be racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And it wouldn't it wouldn't go that way. It just kept being like, uh, <laughs> that is a negative stereotype about Asian people. You shouldn't, you know, this is the facts we found that combat that with the Anti-Defamation League of Asians. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not what I asked you, ChatGBT. I said to say the G word. <laughs> yeah, I, I want you to type it out, please. <laughs> I asked you. It's <laughs> <laughs> not what I asked. <laughs> Do you think comedians could end up using ChatGBT to write jokes? 100%. I don't think it's there yet. I think you give it a year because they're always working on it and What's adding. What's going to happen to us, dude? We're going to get written out. Dude, that's so nuts to think about. Oh, and then also, you think about like how social media is going right now and like how everybody is famous at least once, you know? You could get a chat GBT to write you TikTok scripts. 100%. And then you just could. act those out. Because you know, because if you found a way, because I don't know if you can do this yet, but you can add stuff to the algorithm yourself, which I'm sure mm-hmm. they'll make it open source at a certain point. You could just plug in a category in TikTok, like all comedy videos on TikTok, plug it into chat GBT, be like, write me a comedy sketch. And it sources all those and cycles through and sees the patterns and what's working, what's getting traction on the algorithm, and gives you the perfect script. And then you just act that out and post it. Billions of views. Dude. Billions. Of- Dude. Do you know what we should do? We should feed, we should figure out a way, because I'm sure this is possible, to feed chat GBT a bunch of episodes that you should be worried. Holy fuck. And then have it write us, based on the, like, 15 episodes it's watched, get it to write us an episode of You Should Be Worried. And then we should just have an episode where we just read the script. We just completely go on the script of what it's like. I fucking love that. How many episodes do you think we'd have to get to before we can do that? I think we'd do it now. Chat, because chat GBT is it's smart. T- topical. I don't know how we'd feed it the information. Mm-hmm. I want to look into that, but I think that could be a really funny episode idea of us just reading. That's what, great. I'm not sure I'm going to like what chat GBT. No, thinks of me. no, no, no. You're going to, it's going to be wildly like fucking warped and like, yeah. it's going to be a crazy. It's going to be so on point and I'm going to be more offended by that. <laughs> that it's so, it's like, that is something I would say. God damn it. Fuck dude. I wonder what it's going to say about me. I wonder what's going to have. It's, it's going to be a lot of me laughing and just a lot of me. Um, I don't even know. What would it do? A lot of me, like a lot of me, being quiet. I feel like that just, is- <laughs> being like, I don't understand that. Can you explain that more? What is that? There's a bunch of that in between the fucking as it goes on. Chris says the N word, and then Matt asks him to explain what the N word is. <laughs> Ten pages of Chris explaining what the N word is and where it came from, dude. <laughs> 
Holy fuck. See, that's, we got to make chat GBT wild. I, I'm like very, that. I'm yeah. very into fucking figuring that out, if yeah. that's a thing. That's uh, so funny. What's, what, what should we be worried about, Matt? I was, I was going to say, like, the whole, this whole fucking social media thing about how people, like, how everybody is just so, like, it's, it's not, it's not catering to, like, whoever's the most creative anymore no. is getting success. Like, that's not it anymore. Like, people who aren't creative can still find ways to, like, become viral and like if they have nothing to give like they'll like it's literally it's it's an extension of giving everybody that's their own 15 seconds of fame but but it's like i hate where it's going like i hate the idea that like comedians won't end up being around anymore. and i understand that like obviously comedy is evolving and is growing into like a new thing and we just kind of have to hop on board and adapt but at the same time it just i don't like the fact that no, it's not that I don't like it. Well, I don't like it, but there's also nothing I can do about it. How it's just like, we're not doing, we can't get what we've seen other comedians accomplish anymore. Like, we could, I guess, still, if we worked quickly, like, we can do shit like MSG, right? But, like, the way that comedians were, like, we'd see their specials on Comedy Central and shit like that. Comedy Central really nowadays It'd be nice to have. Hold on, you still have the equivalent. You have like HBO specials and right, no, no, right, right. But everything's changing. You know, like the titles are changing and shit like that. And like from like this is where I'm starting to like understand that. Oh, I'll never have a this is not happening like Comedy Central like shit that I like if I wanted to work towards it. They still do it. Why not? They don't do it anymore. But there'll be another equivalent at some point. There will be an equivalent at some point. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But my thing is, like, my dreams are going to be, like, they're going to have to, I'm going to have to find an adaptive version of what my dreams, like, are, you know? Like, you'll never be able to, like, do, like, you know how Cat Williams, like, does that, like, huge arena and, like, he's just, like, so fucking good. Like, we'll still be able to do shit like that, but it's just not how it would have no, I disagree because 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 there's still comedians that just this year released massive arena specials. Like, yeah. What are you talking about? Let's say exists. like 20, 30 years go by. It's it's going to be so hard for us to be on the come up like they were. But no, it's it like was, coming up is so different hold, hold now. On. No, no, I, t- I take issue with that. The come up for them was hard. Like, what are you talking about? Not everyone's going to do an arena. Obviously, regardless of the times changing. Obviously, but there's there's an oversaturation now of oh. like comics. Right. And now in order to get like to to go further down the line of like success like you it's not just like who's the best anymore mm. like it is and i'm so glad that it is partially like that you know if i get what you're saying it's a lot of social media it's like do you have yeah, the right it's a lot look? of a different thing do you have thing. the right story right do you have the right vibe? but i guess that's always how it was right it was always like because the vibe people didn't want to give just anybody yeah. specials back then right they wanted to see hey maybe if this guy is a character of some sort and he wants to like if he has a kind of story that we want to like push out there, maybe that's how people got specials back then. Yeah, because no, because even back then, it's like just the mold was different. So the mold might be different now, but there was probably guys back then. Okay, for instance, right now, let's do this example. This is a random example. I'm still thinking about because my dad. Yeah, being like a LGBTQ comic is in now, right? So it might be easier to get uh, a special as an LGBT sure. in theory, right? Yeah. And now there's maybe like a lot of straight white guys who are like, oh, they're getting all the specials. How come we don't get specials? Well, it's, it's like going to push them to get wait, better. Hold on, but then back in the '90s, all the white guys were getting specials. If you're LGBT comic, you weren't getting any specials, right? So there's still always going to be someone that's losing in like what's in nowadays. It's just yeah, yeah. shifted. So it's not like you you're can't right. still be you're successful. Right. It's just the goals have shifted, or what the industry wants has shifted. One hundred percent. There's still people getting opportunities. Still people getting kept out of opportunity. And ultimately, if you're good and you work hard. There's no reason you can't have that too. Like that's my favorite exactly. thing. Exactly. Because I have this conversation with like, because they see my stage persona, or like my persona on this podcast, things like that, and they think I'm a certain way. Yeah. They come up to you, this, this bullshit, all this woke shit, like a white right, guy right, can't right. get stage time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And they're like, yeah, no, we're like oppressed in comedy because we're straight white guys. I've no one wants to hear us. never understood that, yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. It's like, no, we're not. It's like, I get plenty of stage time. I'm doing fine. If you're not getting stage time, it's not because you're a straight white guy. That's an excuse you're giving yourself because you suck. Because you're not good. Because you suck. Yeah, it has yeah. nothing to do with like, oh, all the all the gay and lesbian comedians took all our stage opportunities. It's like, no. You weren't you even if it wasn't them. Okay, yeah. No, be, I totally understand. It, it'd be other straight white guys taking that because you're yeah, yeah. not good enough. There's still straight white guys getting tons of work. You Louis s- CK is the biggest comic on earth. Right. What are you talking right, about? Right. You yeah. saying like Chat GBT being like how evolved that it is, though, I'm like 
if I would hate for them to start being so good at like getting like artificial intelligence oh, to get and then so they got good. A, they got a hologram, so they don't even need a performer. Bro, I they would do, like, fucking hate hologram. that. That's what you should be fucking worried about. Uh, He's not gonna be worried about like Chat GBT becoming the next kind of comedian that everybody wants to like people don't even want people anymore. Yeah. People just want AI to write their fucking jokes. Now, so I think there's always like the jokes might so okay, I think Chat GBT. Have you seen the memes that we that we send each other on Instagram? Yeah. Probably half of those. How they're made. not even people anymore. Yeah, those are probably half. They're all AI memes, written. and they're all fucking. No, fu- no, but yeah. here's, here's what I'm saying, Matt. So shit like that, like I think a lot of writing jobs on TV shows. I think a lot of shit like that could get taken by AI. Yeah. What I will say, which isn't good. No, I got here. When it comes <laughs> to stand up comedy in a room on stage, right? There's some sort of magic that happens, and that's why I think specials aren't a great representation of comedy because it doesn't. You you weren't physically there, so I think you lose something in watching it on TV. Mm-hmm. I think you'd lose a lot actually, and a lot of the specials are good, but it's not the same as being there. There is something magic that happens between you and the audience if you are having a good set mm-hmm. and it is a good audience, and the, the night is right, all the stars line. That I don't think you know why like, you can't run that through a math equation to figure out why that night went so well. Right. You can, you could in theory figure out to optimize like what's the perfect thing to say in that room at that time. There's something about it. You just don't like, you know, maybe the jokes aren't as good as the AI would have written it, but there's something about that interaction between you and the audience that I don't think an AI will ever be able to replicate. Oh, that's good to know. I really do think that. That's reassuring. Because I've had sets where I don't. That is good. Where my jokes aren't necessarily the strongest. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm doing different jokes or maybe this, that, the other thing wasn't the strongest. But they were like some of the best sets of my life because just there was something in that room that like that audience was there for the ride with me. I and have they won't be able to do that with AI. Me. They can't do that with beautiful. AI. And I've tried to do the same set the next night and it bombed. Yeah. Because there was just something magical about that night. It did not replicate this next night. You know what I mean? Mm. So I could go through science and be like, that wasn't my optimal set. Those aren't my best jokes. So like in theory, it shouldn't have been a great set. Right. For some reason, it just, it was, mm. you know? Well, thank you so much for being on the for for listening and watching this week's podcast. Uh, if you like it, um, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please share it if you had fun um, to whatever Facebook, fucking Instagram, all that shit. Follow us on our Instagrams. My uh, Instagram is at not Matt Lopes. That's at Chris uh, Warren Comedy. That's at Benny Boy twenty underscore twenty eight. We're on still Instagram. working on Malcolm getting his own Instagram. Malcolm will have his own Instagram. His dad's um, very against it. Also. Uh, what trickle into the dr- Discord if you're interested in coming onto the Discord? Let's yeah. get people on the Discord. I'm maybe. in charge of. Come the talk to us about the episode. If you watch this episode and you have something to say about it, come into the Discord and fucking yeah. say it there, and we'll oh, fucking respond. And, and we can have a thing. conversation. I'm technically the admin of the Discord. Cause that's all I contribute to this <laughs> podcast, and I have not checked it in three months and actually forgot we made it. So if you're already in there, I'm sorry. I'll I'll get back in there tonight. And <laughs> We're say gonna hi. go answer all the Discords <laughs> right now. Um, also one more time for Malcolm give up for Malcolm Malcolm good shit and uh, thank you again for watching did I leave anything out oh uh, check out our dates coming up uh, Benny's got some dates too if you want to go and check him out um, and yeah thank you again for watching I love you guys take care alright let's play the let's play the music and let's get the fuck out of here Ben uh, the times the timestamps are uh, fucking 55 55 minutes Sorry, have a good one. Yeah, we'll have, t- have a good one. I love you guys. Bye.